In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at some tips on effectively using the voiceover tools to create a narration track. Sometimes when you're working on a project, you may have great video, great music, good titles, but something seems lacking if you don't have a narration track. Let's play an example of that very thing for a few seconds here. You get the picture. It works pretty good. It conveys the message, but it would be even more powerful if we had a narration. And so we're going to add that in this particular case. So in order to go to my voiceover tools, I click on the third icon from the bottom on the left, my voiceover recording room. I can click there or press the F10 key. This gets me into my voiceover tools. There are several things that we can do. We have a a audio gain and input level set and it's responding to my voice right now. We can do a fade in or fade out by clicking either of these buttons. I would rather do this a different way and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. The next thing we have is device. So this is where we click on the device. Now if you have one or more microphones that your computer detects, you click on the personal one that you want and then you can select the input volume. If you go to the mixer, that will take you to the mixer in your copy of Windows. Uh, so I'm not going to click there. It's not nearly as good as the mixer that we have in CyberLink PowerDirector. So I have my microphone selected. I'll click on OK. That means that the microphone option is uh, not clickable. But the third option is, that's my profile. I click on profile, it gives me a profile setup. I can create one of my own by click, giving it a title and doing save as. Right now it comes in untitled. The default is PCM and I cannot change that. I only have one option right now. But then I have some attributes. It starts out with 8 kilohertz, 8-bit mono. Now this will give you the smallest file possible, but if I click on the down arrow by attributes, I see I have all of these options. I can increase the kilohertz, I can go 8-bit or 16-bit, I can go mono or stereo. The human voice is mono, so if you're recording just a human voice using this uh, tool, there's no reason to use the stereo option. The larger you choose, the higher number, the larger your audio track will be in your final production. Now that might be a factor for you. For example, I went from the smallest number, the 8-bit, and my audio file size was about 149 kilobits, kilobytes. Then when I went up to the maximum on this, which is 48 kilohertz, it went from 149 kilobyte file to a 1.76 megabyte file. And so it will vary according to your selection. I have a friend in the audio industry and he recommends doing 44.1, uh, he says that's standard, and 16-bit. So I'm going to choose that one. 44.1 kilohertz, 16-bit mono since I'm recording the human voice. And I'll click on OK. And then the other thing you have, now that I have that finished, is I can click on the, the uh, option to go ahead and simply record. I have a preferences option. I can choose a time limit. I don't really use that a lot. I can add a three second delay before recording. I don't use that a lot. This is where I would use an auto fade in or auto fade out, but I'd rather fade in or fade out using my audio editing capabilities within PowerDirector. But you can choose whatever you want in terms of the preferences. So I'll cancel and close that menu. Now the other option I have is I can mute all the tracks when recording. If I need to hear the other tracks when I'm recording, I leave this unchecked. If I don't care about the other audio, I'm going to turn it off. Now in this case, I'm going to turn it off so I don't need to hear them 
as I record. I'm going to time it on the basis of the length of the clip and not on the basis of the music. And I have no other human voice in this particular case. So I will mute them. Just makes it a little easier for me. Then when you're ready to record, all you do is click on the record button and it will start at the beginning of the clip and it will record it until you press the record button again. So let's go ahead and try that on this uh, 16 second clip and see if we can do a nice narration voiceover. We'll start simply by pressing the button and going from there. Explore the desert southwest with Westwind Trails, www.wwt.com. Check out our campsites. We also offer trail rides, guided tours, lodging, and much, much more at www.wwt.com. When you're finished with your recording, you'll note that if you drag down in your tracks, you have a voice track near the bottom of your project and it will capture it as a WAV file and store it there. If you want to redo it as many times as possible, all you need to do is delete it and start the process over again. If I go to my media room, I'll find my file. It will be called Capture. It will have a number on it, depending on how many variations I've done of it. I can go ahead and actually delete it from the hard drive, save it as my project, do whatever I want to with the audio file. Explore the Desert Southwest with Westwind Trails, www.wwt.com. Check out our campsites. We also offer trail rides, guided tours, lodging, and much, much more at www.wwt.com.